Okay, this is a DT graph, and we're going to have numbers on it. So, DT graph. It's a displacement time graph. You can tell it's a displacement time graph because it's in the positive section. So, this is your D in the positive direction, and this is your D in the negative direction. You can call it positive or negative D if you'd like. And we need to know, since I've given you numbers on here, and it goes all the way up to 60, I'm not sure if you can make that out, and down to minus 60. And let's say that we're measuring these in kilometers, okay? And our time frame then will be here, it'll be my time, and I'm gonna measure it in hours. There's a whole lot of things happening on this graph. Specifically, you've got one, two, three, four segments. And so we could find a lot of things out about every segment. I'm gonna just, because I wanna conserve my space, I'm gonna find out the velocity of this segment and then I'm going to find the velocity out of this segment. And since they're theoretically, this is positive velocity, and it's not very fast, and you're starting from the positive direction, your point of reference, you're going slow, then you stop, change directions. Anytime you have a change of direction on a DT graph, you have to stop momentarily. So you momentarily stop, you drive in the negative direction, it looks like a little bit quicker of a negative velocity, then you stop, change directions, you go in a positive velocity, then you go in a negative velocity. So you're just going back and forth. This person couldn't make up their mind. I'm going to figure out the velocity of segment one. First thing you need to know, very, very key information is that slope is going to be equal to velocity on a DT graph. And if you remember your velocity formula, it's rise over run, I'm not going to bother even writing. I guess I will rise over run, except I want it in its formula, the one that you learned in math, and that's going to be your y-axis divided by your x-axis. Our y-axis is d's, our x-axis is t's, so it's actually going to be d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. Okay, that's your slope formula, and that's average velocity. So let's do average velocity for this segment right here. Segment one. My average velocity is going to be d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. So let's figure it out. This is your two point. And this is your one point. Your two point is always further down the time axis. So look at where you are. You want D's first. So come across to where the D is. That's 40. Specifically, it's positive 40 because it's in the positive direction. I want to subtract it from D1. There's D1. Read what you are. You are positive 30. And your time frame is 5 hours. Subtract 0 hours. So we can figure out our average velocity nicely here. It's going to be positive 10. 40 subtract 30 over 5. So your average velocity it's positive 2, and then you look at your units, kilometers, hours. So positive 2 kilometers per hour. That tells you how fast you're going and in what direction. The positive means that you're on this side. Okay, so there's segment 1. Let's go to segment 2 now. I'm going to figure out for segment 2 how fast I went. And it looks like the number is going to be way bigger than 2, but I should hopefully get a negative value because I'm coming down and to the left. So for segment two, I'm finding average velocity still. It's still going to be d2 minus d1, t2 minus t1. I want to know what d2 is. Well, remember, further down your time frame. So there's your starting point, there's your ending point. You're moving down the time frame this way. So this is your two point, which means this has to be your one point. So go to two. Whoop all the way across to the D and look what it is. It's minus 50. Minus 50, subtract. Now go up to your 1, come across 30. Positive 30 to be exact. And then your time frames, you come up, you go 19, subtract 15. So your average velocity, you're going to get minus 50 minus positive 30, which is like saying minus 50 minus 30, which is minus 80. If you don't believe me, pull out your calculator, check it out. 19 minus 5, that's 4. So your average velocity then should end up being minus 20, and then look at your units, kilometers per hour. 
So that works out. A really, really shallow line, or not very steep, was 2. And a really, really steep line was 20. So that works. And up and to the right, that's positive. And down and to the right, oops, that's negative. So that works out well for us. There's other things that we can find out about this graph, but this graph is full, so I'm going to get rid of it. But I have the exact same graph still right here. So what did I say? I said this was positive D, and I said it was in kilometers. I said this was negative D, I said it was in kilometers, and I said this thing was my time frame, and it's in hours. And that it's a DT graph there. We can figure out some things about this now. For instance, we can figure out the total distance this object has traveled. So total distance. Remember, distance does not care about direction. So what you do is you go to starting point, which is here. And you just keep track of all of these velocities and just how far they go. So you start off at 30, you go to here, well that's 40, so that's 10. Right, 30 to 40 is 10 kilometers. Then you're at 40 and you go to zero. Well, from 40 to zero, that's 40 more. Then we're here, we go from zero to 30, well that's 30 more. And then I go from 30 all the way down to 50. From 30 to 50 is 80. So that's 50 plus 30 is 80 plus 80, that's 160 kilometers. So while you're doing your driving here and all your velocities, so your speedometer showing all these velocities, your odometer reads 160 kilometers further from where you, when you started here to down here. Okay? That's total distance. If I wanted to do total displacement, and I do, total displacement, well now I have to be very concerned with the direction that I go in. So I go back to my beginning. I'm going from here to here. I look, that goes from 30 to 40, but it goes in the positive direction. So that's positive 10. Now I'm at positive 40. I end up at zero. I go 40 in the negative direction. I go 40 down. So that's minus 40. Then I go from zero up to 30 in the positive direction. So that's positive 30 more. Then I come from positive 30 all the way down to minus 50, that's 80 in the negative direction. Okay, so when I do this, 10 minus 40 is minus 30, plus 30 is 0, minus 80, so I've gone minus 80 kilometers. Your speedometer can't read minus 80 kilometers, but what this tells you is that you're, if this was your starting point, you've just ended up 80 kilometers in the negative of that. So if this, if this was considered right and then downward would be considered left, you'll end up being 80 kilometers left of where you started. There is another much easier way, in my opinion, to find total displacement. Fortunately, total distance, no easier way. You gotta run through it. But look at this. I started here. I ended here. I started at 30. I ended at minus 50, so between 30 and minus 50 is minus 80. Same number. A little bit easier of a way for you. So there you go. Some information on a DT graph with numbers in it.